Hey guys, welcome back to Good News Radio. The Civil War was raging. Men called Night Riders came to farms at night to capture people and sell them in other states as slaves. One terrible night, the Night Riders raided the Carver Plantation. Mary, run! Hide! Moses and Susan Carver thought of Mary like their own daughter, and Moses didn't want anything to happen to her little family. He threw Mary's young son James over his shoulder and ran to the cave below the milk house. James was the only one who escaped. Mary, her daughter, and baby George, who was very sick, were all captured. The next morning, Moses Carver went to the barn and picked out his finest and favorite racehorse pacer, worth $300 at the time. Today, he would be worth thousands of dollars. He saddled another horse and took both into town where he met John Bentley, who used to be a night rider. 40 acres of beautiful land if you bring me Mary and her family back, alive. I'm even giving you my best racehorse to get started. Some time later, John Bentley returned holding a dirty bundle. A tiny face peered out. I couldn't find Mary or her daughter. I only found the baby. I don't deserve everything you've offered me. I'll give you the baby if you give me the horse. All right. Thank you for your work. George had been redeemed. To be redeemed means that something was bought back after it had been lost or taken away. George was like part of Moses' family, but he had been taken away. Moses loved George enough to redeem him. He bought George back, even though the cost was very high. George grew up calling the Carvers Aunt Susan and Uncle Moses. They loved him like he was their own son. George was very sick as a little boy. Because of that, he was thin and had a high-pitched voice. He stuttered as he talked, but he enjoyed singing as he worked. He couldn't work in the fields with Uncle Moses like his older brother James did, so he was given household tasks. George washed the clothes, but washing machines hadn't been invented yet. He had to heat the water and scrub and rinse the clothes all by hand. He also cooked, ironed, and mended his own clothes. But even with all this work to do, George often found time to wander in the woods. He loved the outdoors and the things he saw there. Plants, flowers, insects, and other interesting things. George had a secret garden in the woods, a deep hole in a little clearing surrounded by thick trees. Down in the hole, he kept dying plants in tin cans. Every night, he would cover the hole with a board, and every morning, he would lift the plants out to get some sun. Neighbors called him the little plant doctor and actually asked him for advice on growing plants. George knew about diseases and harmful insects which could kill a plant. He learned more and more as he studied and observed the amazing things in God's creation. One day, George learned the most important lesson of his life. But it wasn't while he was doing chores or exploring in the woods. It happened when he was a young teenager after he had left the Carvers to go to school. A Christian couple took him in, gave him a Bible, and took him to church. One Sunday, the preacher said something that really surprised him. He said that God loves everyone, even boys and girls. He had heard about Jesus before, but George suddenly understood that God loved him, that Jesus had died for him. This made him so happy he wanted to cry, so he prayed, God, I'm sorry for my sin. Thank you for loving me and sending your son to die for me. I know he has saved me from my sin. It was a moment he would always remember. George later discovered many things, but the discovery that God loved him was the greatest discovery he ever made. God had directed George's life, saving him from the Night Riders, giving him a loving family to redeem him and raise him, helping him learn about plants, and leading him to church where he heard about God's love and salvation. God would continue to direct George's life and help him make many more amazing discoveries. George learned early on that God answers prayer. George was a hard worker and he never wasted time. He didn't learn to read until he was 13, but by the time he was 14, he was reading and memorizing whole chapters of the Bible. In fact, he memorized most of Genesis, Psalms, Proverbs, and the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. George often thought about God's many promises in the Bible. He prayed asking God to use his life to help other people. One winter, he traveled to Kansas in a covered wagon. He wanted to be near another school so he could learn more about plants, animals, and other things God created. 
George didn't have a job, but he knew God would take care of him, even though he was alone and had no money. As he was walking around town praying, he saw a sign in a window, Hired Girl Wanted. He knocked on the door. A stern woman opened the door and glared down at him. I don't want a scrawny boy. I want a big, strong girl. Can you cook? My husband's a fussy eater. If he likes your food, maybe you can stay. Although she wasn't too friendly at first, she gave George a chance to cook dinner that night. All the household tasks George had done as a child prepared him to do this job. Mr. Payne loved George's cooking so much that George was hired. From then on, it was Uncle Seymour and Aunt Lucy for George. He had a family again. In Alabama, a man who believed in Jesus was praying for help. Dr. Booker T. Washington had begun a college in Tuskegee. The college was just some old shacks, an old horse, a butter churn, and a small brick building the students had built. The students worked 10 hours a day making bricks to sell, then studied at night for two hours. They didn't have enough to eat, so they were hungry, but they kept their minds on what they were studying. By this time, George was a professor and knew a lot about farming because he had studied agriculture. Dr. Washington wrote to George and asked him to be in charge of the agricultural department, teach classes in several subjects, and run a laboratory at the college. George knew he could help the students, but what did God want him to do? One of George's favorite Bible verses was Proverbs 3, 6. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. God, please give me direction for what to do. God made it clear that he wanted George to help in Tuskegee. George was able to help the students learn so much. He worked with them to clear 20 acres of land for a garden. That's about the size of eight football fields. But to the students' surprise, George had them plant soybeans. They had hoped for fruits and vegetables. But after George served them a supper of pancakes, potatoes, and meatloaf, all made from mashed soybeans, the students were very happy. God used George to help many people while he lived in Tuskegee. Poor families were starving, unaware that the plants growing all around them that they thought were weeds could be used in recipes and eaten. George showed them how to make dandelion and sourgrass pie, chicory coffee, and many other things. He held county fairs, and one time more than 9,000 farmers came to learn from their professor. The South's big crop had always been cotton, but God was telling George to notice the little peanut. Peanuts grew wild in the woods, and some farmers had a peanut patch for their children. But most people thought peanuts were only good for pigs to eat. George started to tell the people to plant peanuts. Peanuts are nourishing food and good for the soil. Plant peanuts. Finally, he got people all over the South to plant peanuts. But after the farmers harvested their peanut crops, nobody wanted to buy them. Peanuts lay rotting in the fields, and the farmers were angry at George. We are so sick of peanuts. George was shocked and worried. He had meant to help, but his advice created a big problem. George shut himself in his laboratory called God's Little Workshop. After he had locked the door, he fell on his knees. He prayed, Dear Creator, why did you make the peanut? George needed God's direction more than ever to know how to use the peanut. He prayed that God would direct him. And that's exactly what God did. George started to take the peanut apart and find out what it was made of. He found out they are made up of oil, sugar, starch, carbohydrates, and several other things. George used his knowledge of chemistry and began studying the peanut and how it could be used. He made a glass of milk from peanuts, then beat it and made butter and cheese. He made more milk and turned it into ice cream and candy. He made 32 different kinds of milk. He also made salad, imitation chicken, soup, cake, and pickles. How did George think of so many things to make from peanuts? Well, every morning, George got up long before the sun came up to read his Bible and ask God what he should discover that day. He was asking God to direct his path, and God was faithful in guiding George's discoveries. Many years later, he said, I never asked God anything he did not do. We work together, and the ideas come faster than I can work them out. By 1923, five million bushels of peanuts, seven million pounds of peanut butter, and three million pounds of peanut oil were being produced in the United States. 
Many factories were built to make the 300 items George had discovered could be made from peanuts. More than 5 million acres of peanuts were planted. God used George Washington Carver to save the people of the South from starving after the Civil War. He became a world-famous scientist and was called a New Columbus because he just kept discovering things. George could have been very rich by selling the information he discovered, but he freely shared his secrets. One day, he was invited to speak to the United States Senate in Washington, D.C. He opened his suitcase and pulled out bottles of things made from peanuts. Mayonnaise, dyes, shampoos, grease, ink, vinegar, soap, and oil. Even though George had been given only 10 minutes to speak, the men were very interested and begged him to keep talking. George ended up speaking for almost two hours. The men asked how he had discovered so many things. From a book, the Bible. The Bible doesn't talk about peanuts, but it tells of God who provides us with everything. George died at the age of 80 after living a very full life. He made many important discoveries in his life, but the most important discovery George made was the discovery that Jesus is the one who could save him from his sin. Did you know that Jesus came to save you from your sin? Your sin, the wrong things you do, keep you away from God who is perfect. There's nothing you can do to save yourself from your sin on your own. But Jesus, God's perfect son, is the one who can save you. Jesus died on a cross and gave his blood to make a way for you to be saved. After Jesus died, he came to life and proved he has the power to save you. The Bible says, whoever believes in the son has eternal life. That means if you choose to trust in Jesus as the one who can save you from your sin, then you will have eternal life. That is life forever with God. It means you will no longer be separated from God and you will have a friendship with him that will last forever. Will you believe in Jesus to have eternal life today? Maybe as you were listening to the story, you believed in Jesus for the first time. You can tell God the things you believe about what Jesus did for you when he died on the cross and came back to life. If you would like to believe in Jesus to save you from your sin, you can do that right now. God will hear you no matter where you are. You can trust that if you truly believe in Jesus as your Savior, you will have eternal life. Well, thanks for listening, guys. We'll see you next time.